Welcome to the next video in the evolution topic. This video will be looking at life on earth.8.4.15, identify changes in technology that have assisted in the development of an increased understanding of the origin of life and the evolution of living things. So as humans explored the evolution of life, they proposed hypotheses to explain the events. Parallel with this research, other scientists were independently developing new technologies that enabled these hypotheses to be tested. This involved the cooperation of scientists and the technologies in all branches of science. It started with a simple technology of ready, a few glass jars and some cotton material, which helped him to disprove the theory of spontaneous generation. He proceeded to Spallanzi's flask and the ingenious one neck flask designed by Louis Pasteur that showed that microbes were present in the air. The development of light microscopes enabled scientists to discover organisms that could not be seen with the naked eye and Leeuwenhoek in 1676 discovered microorganisms by using that simple microscope. More recent technologies have become available and that has helped us to understand sorry, to develop our understanding of the origin of life and the evolution of things. As it, is be as it became possible to identify chemicals and molecular structure, this gave evidence to support the action of organic compounds. Other changes in technology have made it possible to accurately date fossils and piece together a more complete picture. The sequence of past events on Earth had been determined before absolute dates could be assigned to them. And this was because the technology of radiometric dating had not been developed yet. So one of these particular technologies is uh, being able to understand plate tectonics and continental drift. So geologists have developed our knowledge of the structure of the earth using seismology, which is the study of the pressure or shock waves from earthquakes. Towards the 19th century, they developed instruments called seismographs to record the wave patterns from earthquakes. Along with these seismographs, scientists have also been able to use research ships which study the Earth's magnetic field and they're able to drill into the ocean floor and use ultrasound depth sounding techniques in order to look at the age of the rocks underneath the Earth at different parts. We are also able to compare fossil samples across continents to see how the continents were all once connected. In the beginning of the 17th century, the English philosopher Francis Bacon noticed that the east coast of America and the west coast of Africa looked as if they could fit together like jigsaw pieces. This observation was supported by the science to studies of the remains of living organisms which were embedded in the rocks, which we now know as fossils. The remains of identical species of plants and animals were found on land masses that once were together but are now separated by oceans. We also have the technology of radiometric dating. So as we know, radioactivity is the emission of alpha, beta or gamma rays from unstable isotopes of some elements on the periodic table. Each isotope decays at its own constant rate. As rocks or living, matters, living matter form, radioisotopes are incorporated into them in proportion to the isotope's atmosphere, abundance sorry, in the atmosphere. Once a living organism dies, its level of radioactivity isotope begins to decrease since there is no further exchange of matter with the environment. The decay of each isotope can act as a radiometric clock because a measurement of the proportion of radioactive to stable isotope in the sample can indicate the age of that particular sample. Uranium-238 is a common radioisotope used by geochemists to measure the age of rocks. Uranium-238 has a long half-life and decays into lead. By measuring the amount of uranium-238 that is still present in rock compared to the amount of lead, the age of the rock can be determined with an accuracy of greater than 95%. We also know from our um, previous topic that carbon-14 can also be used to measure the age of rocks, and it has a half-life of about 5,500 uh, 5, years, so it's commonly used. So both of these uh, radioisotopes have been used to help establish the age of Earth by measuring the age of particular rocks that have been found in various locations. Next we have simulations of conditions. So a simulation of the conditions of early Earth, as you and Miller have done, has enabled scientists to see if, given certain conditions, certain events will occur. They are testing out the feasibility of a number of hypotheses. 
Simulations depend on the construction of equipment such as that of Yuri and Miller, which we can find in the modern laboratory. Then we have the discovery or the development of the electron microscope. Electron micros microscopy has been another useful source of information about early life forms. Remains of microorganisms and the mineral nature of early rocks can be studied under the electron microscope. The nature of the minerals gives clues to the environment and the structure of the organisms reflects how they might have survived in their environment. Biochemical analysis is one that has been uh, developed over the last, say, 50 years and is constantly being improved. The analysis of biochemicals and in particular DNA has enabled scientists to undertake comparative studies of organisms. Genetic engineering techniques continue to develop, to develop to help scientists to understand how change can take place in living organisms and therefore we can better understand the relationships between organisms and their possible evolutionary pathways. Deep sea exploration vessels. Uh, as we know, the presence of deep sea vents was unknown until there were certain vessels that were able to travel to the depths of the ocean. Once this occurred, it was discovered that there were many unknown organisms living on the vents and in the vents and using the energy from the vents as a basis for an ecosystem. Spacecraft, as we know, there is the theory of panspermia where it's believed that the molecules necessary for life came from space. So sending spacecraft to other planets makes it possible to examine conditions on these planets and compare them to the conditions on early Earth to see whether or not panspermia is a plausible uh, theory for the evolution of life. So how has technology assisted in our understanding? As we know, evolution is a process of gradual change in populations of organisms that has resulted in the variety and complexity of present day life forms. Through evolution, organisms have undergone change become extinct or remain largely unchanged. There are a number of diverse forms of evidence for evolution, including paleontology, uh, which we know is the study of fossils, the comparison of embryos and homologous structures, biogeography and biochemistry. The use of radioisotopes has allowed us to accurately date volcanic rocks and thus to infer the age of associated sedimentary rocks that contain fossils. Radiocarbon dating has assisted direct dating of fossils up to about 60,000 years old. The oldest microfossils have been dated to 3.5 billion years old, although there are some workers who still question the interpretation of these findings. Electron microscopes have revealed details of microscopic fossils that have enabled comparison of early life forms with existing microorganisms. And technologies associated with biochemistry have given us the ability to compare DNA and proteins across groups of organisms. This has been applied to clarify the relationships between prokaryotic bacteria, archaea, and eukaryotic cells. So in summary, scientists had established the order of events on Earth and the evolution of living things before they had exact dates for these events. The order was established by studying fossils using the principle of superposition and stratigraphic correlation. So basically the principle of superposition is that the oldest fossils are at the bottom, the youngest fossils are at the top. And stratigraphic correlation simply means using rocks of similar ages to see what fossils were present and working out the relative ages of those particular organisms that were fossilized. And lastly, technologies of seismology, radiometric dating, simulations, microscopy, biochemical studies, deep sea exploration vessels and spacecraft have all increased our understanding of the origin of life. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.